With great music comes great fights. Kanye West, Katy Perry, Lil Wayne, Drake, Taylor Swift, Iggy Azalea, Nicki Minaj, put any mega stars in a room together and disagreements are bound to happen, along with some awesome diss tracks. Hi, I'm Tetris, and Mike Drop is here to recap the 12 biggest beefs in music. So put on your blockers and get ready for some shade starting now. Number one, Taylor Swift versus Katy Perry. One of the biggest beefs of this decade, everyone is still talking about the bad blood between Taylor Swift and Katy Perry, mostly because of the song Bad Blood that Taylor wrote about Katy. Enlisting her army of celebs for the music video, Taylor Swift made it clear just how pissed she was at Katy for hiring her old backup dancers out from under Taylor while her tour was still taking place. And maybe, just maybe, there was already some awkwardness after Katy started dating Taylor's ex, John Mayer, who I think is kind of everybody's ex. As we know, these two will not be sending each other Christmas cards anytime soon. Number two, Tupac versus Biggie. Hard to believe these two were once friends because Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls had one of the most famous beefs in history. That caused a huge rift between the East Coast and West Coast rappers and sadly ended with the passing of both hip hop legends. The feud started in 1994 after Tupac got shot in the lobby of a recording studio five times, and then went into the studio to find Biggie, Sean Puffy Combs, and producer Andre Harrell looking at what he described as shocked to see him alive. Tupac even said in an interview that I noticed nobody would look at me. This led the West Coast rapper to suspect the notorious B.I.G. had something to do with the shooting, especially after hearing Biggie's song, Who Shot Ya?, and taking it personally despite Biggie and Combs saying they recorded it before the incident. Sounds a little fishy. Tupac then unleashed an array of diss tracks towards Biggie. The most famous one was Hit Em Up, in which Tupac reminds Biggie that he was a good friend, saying, remember when I let you sleep on the couch? And then goes on to make threats and claim that he hooked up with his wife. Yikes. Sadly, a few months later, Tupac was shot and killed in Las Vegas. And six months after that, Biggie Smalls was shot and killed in LA. Both cases are still unsolved. And though we lost both rappers too soon, their music has not been forgotten and is still played by fans around the world. Number three, the big rap feud of this generation is Drake versus Meek Mill. The whole fiasco started when Meek Mill took to Twitter and claimed that Drake had a ghostwriter, Quentin Miller, who wrote his rhymes. A whole slew of people came to Drake's defense, including his longtime producer, Noah Forty Shabib, Quentin Miller himself, and even Canadian city councilor, Norm Kelly, who tweeted that Meek Mill was no longer welcome there. They can do that? Then a bunch of diss tracks toward each other, including Drake's Charged Up and Bag to Back, which fans love, but when Meek Mill came out with his diss track, wanna know, listeners were not impressed with the track, and a bunch of memes came out about the rapper, which Drake mockingly displayed on screen at his next concert. Mink Mill then freestyled a bunch of Drake disses at his next few shows, one even claiming the whole beef was really about Nicki Minaj, his current girlfriend, who Drake had a long time crush on. Though the two have been close friends, Nicki and Drake are no longer on speaking terms because of her relationship with Mink Mill. Hopefully for rap fans everywhere, this beef ends soon, or at least leads to more of those memes. Number four, Kanye West versus Taylor Swift. This is one that most can agree Kanye started when he hopped on stage in 2009 and interrupted Taylor Swift's first ever MTV VMA victory to say that Beyonce deserved to win, burn. Since then, Kanye has apologized and the two have made friends. Until recently when Kanye released his song Famous in which Kanye raps, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. I made that famous. A huge statement to make, which Taylor was not happy about, and commented on in her 2016 Grammy-winning speech for Album of the Year, in which she basically takes back the credit for her own fame and encourages young women to work hard and ignore the haters. Preach, sister. Bye, Kanye. Amen. Number five, Ice Cube versus N.W.A. A feud revisited with the release of the 2015 film Straight Outta Compton. This rivalry between Ice Cube and his former rap group N.W.A. was made public through their music. After reaching major success with N.W.A. but not receiving much payment, Ice Cube called it quits and went solo. N.W.A. was not happy with losing their group member and main writer and felt betrayed. Their next two albums included insults toward Ice Cube, like the song, Message to B.A. in which they label him a Benedict Arnold, and an Ice-T wannabe. Ouch. 
Now, Q responded with his song, No Vaseline, which strongly criticizes Eazy-E for joining forces with manager Jerry Heller and taking advantage of the rest of the group. Well, he got lots of backlash for the line, cause you let a Jew break up my crew. Was he using a rhyming dictionary? And reference to Heller causing a riff in the group. Eventually, Dr. Dre left due to financial disputes and created a new label with Suge Knight, and the other members soon followed with their own solo careers. Now the group finally made amends in 1994 and even decided to reunite and make a new NWA album. Unfortunately, Eazy-E passed away a few months later, before they had a chance to record. The members now talk fondly of Eazy-E and NWA, and so do we, straight out of fan clubs. Number six, Nicki Minaj versus Lil' Kim. Imitation is not always the sincerest form of flattery, at least not to Lil' Kim. Nicki Minaj has been constantly compared to Lil' Kim. For her first mixtape, Nicki recreated an old photo of Kim, and while Nicki gave mad props to Lil' Kim in a 2009 interview, the veteran rapper still seemed to be furious over Nicki's similar style and being dubbed Queen of Rap, and then she began throwing major shade at her. What followed? Well, you guessed it, a few diss tracks between the two, including Lil' Kim's remix of Beyonce's song For Lawless, in which Nicki had an alleged jab in the original, and in the song Identity Theft, and then in Nicki's song Stupid Ho. Lil' Kim even came out with an album in 2011 titled Black Friday, in response to Nicki's album Pink Friday, with a cover showing Kim having just decapitated someone with pink hair. Looks an awful lot like Nicki, gruesome. Now the whole thing escalated after Nicki Minaj won the 2015 BET award for Coca-Cola's Viewer's Choice. In her speech, Nicki allegedly takes a jab at Lil' Kim saying, this is for everyone in this room. I wanna tell you, please make it your business to follow your dreams because one day you will look around and your dream will be gone and you will be mad at somebody, but be mad at your goddamn self. Woo! Lil' Kim was of course not happy and said without Kim, well, there would be no Nicki. Now Mink Mill, Nicki's current bae, is trying to get the two women to collaborate. I'm down, but it's not looking too good. Pink and black just don't mix. Number seven, Iggy Azalea versus everyone. I mean, seriously, who hasn't had a beef with Iggy? I hope I'm on the list next. But for whatever reason, the Australian rapper has caught a lot of slack, including tips with Nicki Minaj, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Talib Kweli, Macklemore, Q-Tip, Erica Badu, and the list goes on and on. And even Britney Spears, that's my girl, with whom she collaborated on their single, Pretty Girls, had issues with Iggy after the rapper implied that the song was flopping and it was all Britney's fault because she didn't do enough promo. Well, Brit Brit calmly tweeted that she was glad to have a full year of Vegas shows to look forward to. Hashtag, you want a piece of me? You know, because Iggy's tour was canceled twice. Now, the only person with more beefs than Iggy is one of her own rivals, rapper Azalea Banks. Banks is known for being hot-headed and blasting people on Twitter. Her hit list includes, ready for it? Iggy Azalea, Nicki Minaj, Lil' Kim, T.I., T.I.'s wife Tiny, Pharrell, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Lady Gaga, Rita Ora, ASAP Rocky, Perez Hilton, Angel Hayes, Funkmaster Flex, Cray Sean, Dolce & Gabbana, Jim Jones, Dominique Young, Unique, former manager Troy Carter, and who? wait for the last one, Sarah Palin. And one tweet Banks even said about herself that she is naturally rude. Well, at least she admits it. Now moving back into the pop world, number eight, Miley Cyrus versus Selena Gomez. Miley and Selena have had a long feud going for a while, allegedly because they shared their interest in Nick Jonas back when they were teens. Both pop stars dated the Jonas brother, and Miley even wrote the song Seven Things About Him. Well, here's what happened. Nick dated Miley for two years, and then began dating Selena. Selena and her BFF Demi Lovato made some YouTube videos for fun, which Miley and her BFF Mandy spooked. Then Miley apologized, and was soon seen getting close to Jay Biebs on stage. But Bieber then started dating Selena. Now once Justin and Selena broke up, Miley started hanging out with Bieber, and even did a collaboration with him. At the 2013 Jingle Ball, Miley tweeted at Selena Gomez, where you at? Which many fans believe was a taunt to Selena. Now a few months later, Selena's BFF Demi Lovato unfollowed Miley on Twitter, who unfollowed her back. Now Miley threw a cardboard cutout of Selena Gomez on stage while she performed her song, F You, Way Harsh Girl. Then after the Much Music Video Awards where Selena beat Miley for favorite international artist, well, Miley posted a tweet that said she felt like voting was rigged. The latest was in 2015 when Miley mimicked a sexy selfie Selena posted hitting that huh, Selena did it to get more followers. Well, despite all these clues, Selena Gomez recently stated in a 2016 interview with E! News that there was never any feud between them and that they just liked the same guy when they were younger and hey, both happened to be leaving Disney at the same time. 
believable on Selena's end, but Miley made her feelings clear when she threw that cardboard cutout, Selena. I guess she don't love you like a love song. Hey. Now going back even further into pop history, I mean, not that far because I bought both their albums. Anyway, number nine, NSYNC versus Backstreet Boys. Fans, though many rumors surfaced that the members themselves disliked each other, there was never any actual beef between the groups themselves. Just the fans. Still a hot topic today over 18 years later. Who's counting? NSYNC and Backstreet Boys fans will forever defend their boy bands to the graves. Just go on any site mentioning the two groups and watch the comment war unfold in a heated debate. Talk about loyal fans. Even BSB member AJ McLean's wife, who is a bigger NSYNC fan, defends them over her husband's group saying, AJ, hey, they're way better dancers than you guys. Now luckily the members themselves have put the rivalry in the past and have even collaborated together on a zombie western sci-fi movie called Dead 7, created by BSB member himself Nick Carter. Hopefully someday the fans can conquer the undead rivalry too, but NSYNC's better. And around that same time frame, number 10, Eminem vs Mariah Carey. Everyone remembers Mariah Carey's 2009 song Obsessed, which is allegedly about Eminem. But it all started back in 2002 when Eminem mentioned Mariah in his song Superman and When the Music Stops, implying that they dated. Mariah then denied the relationship in an interview on Larry King Live and had Eminem puppets at her concert to mock the situation. She also took a jab at him in her own song Clown from her Charm Bracelet album. Now in response, Eminem played some old voicemails from Mariah Carey on stage at his concert. What? People still leave voicemails? And then both he and 50 Cent threw out Mariah disses and some new tracks, including M song Bagpipes from Baghdad, in which he sarcastically wishes Nick Cannon good luck with Mariah. And then she released her song Obsessed with the lyrics, why are you so obsessed with me, boy you wanna know. She said he was lying that he was sexing her when everybody know. And as a final response, Eminem came out with the track The Warning, in which he threatens to make public Mariah's phone calls to his house. Woo! Since then, there has been no sign of war. Definitely an old case of did they or didn't they, and I'm definitely glad it's over. Number 11, Skrillex vs. Deadmau5. The two EDM producers were also once friends, and Deadmau5 even launched Skrillex's career. But when Justin Bieber's music video for Where Are You Now was released, which Skrillex worked on, well, Deadmau5 slammed the song on Twitter. Now when asked about it later, Skrillex said, I'll always have love for Joel, because he put me on at an early time. But he's an asshole, and everyone knows that. He knows that. I think it's kind of his thing. Deadmau5 and Skrillex then exchanged several tweets that, well, we really can't repeat. So we're just gonna put our EDM headphones back on and enjoy the music. Number 12, Lil Wayne versus Birdman. Since childhood, Lil Wayne has been a team with Brian Birdman Williams, his mentor and CEO of Cash Money Records for the 99 2000. The two have been inseparable and have even been pictured kissing, saying they were like father and son. Hmm. But Weezy shocked the world in 2014 when he tweeted that he wanted off the Cash Money label, saying, I am a prisoner and so is my creativity. He then filed a lawsuit for $51 million, a release from his contract, and the release of his Young Money label, which is under the Cash Money umbrella, and has megastars Drake and Rihanna signed to it. Lil Wayne claimed that his album, The Carter Five, has been delayed because Birdman and Cash Money will not release it, and so he released an independent mixtape called Sorry for the Way. Too, and what she calls the label a garden full of snakes. Wheezy was always good with painting a picture, and hopefully this picture gets fixed soon. Once again, I'm Tetris, and thanks for watching Mike Drop's 12 Biggest Beefs in Music. Which ones were your favorites? Did we miss any? Comment below and let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to get all the best music trivia.